you for having me. It's always a pleasure. And um, for some of our members and guests uh, that will be with us this evening, they may have seen this presentation before, but I promise you I'm going to put a different spin on it. Uh, we have a meeting that's coming up. Uh, we're going to have our yearly kickoff event, and this is going to be on Saturday, February 6th. We haven't announced it yet, but we will in the coming days. And um, I've been thinking a lot about what it is that I want to present at this event, and I've decided that I want to give our uh, community a look into the future and what we're, what we've been creating in our labs um, the, the past year and what type of technology they're going to be able to see us release over the next five to ten years. And uh, I gave this presentation to our marketing team and they were absolutely blown away because they had no idea about the breadth of uh, things that we were working on. It needless to say, it, it extends well past patches. Uh, so I might be talking a little bit about that and and throwing in some teasers tonight um, before we get to the questions. So let's go ahead and get started. Awesome. So uh, tonight we are going to be talking about stem cells, regenerative science. And actually, I did receive a new U.S. patent yesterday. And uh, strangely enough, this patent was how to use light to kill viruses. Uh, I thought that might have been fairly timely. Um, I've been working on this for several years, and strange enough, it turns out that you can kill viruses with light, uh, among some other techniques. Um, anyway. That's uh, exciting. That is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, and it's, uh, of course, it's, it's very timely. Uh, I'm going to be very careful that I don't say anything that's gonna get me in trouble with the FDA or the FTC. I don't wanna overreach and make claims. Um, although we did conduct a study in a hospital uh, this year, and uh, we were very, very pleased with the results that we received. And uh, we have one of the top 10 universities in the United States now that we have a, a conference call with in two days. And, um, this university is interested in performing a clinical study specifically using this technology on how to use light to eradicate viruses. So what I would say is that if someone is suffering with a chronic illness, uh, let's say this would be a herpes infection such as oral herpes, genital herpes, shingles. Um, if you're suffering with those illnesses, um, there are solutions and there there are answers. It's just a matter of bringing these things uh, into the, the public and getting past some of the regulatory restrictions. Uh, but there are answers. And if someone wanted to ask me a question about that later, I would be happy to elaborate on what people can do today to uh, to ease their symptoms and manage this. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, and first, we would define the problem. Why are we interested in stem cells? Well, stem cells are universal cells. And so any cell that you have in your body, a skin cell, liver cell, muscle tissue, uh, is originally started as a stem cell. So you, and there are many different types of stem cells in the body, but basically you start with these universal stem cells. They divide and they differentiate and then eventually they become uh, a, a final cell in the body, like a liver or kidney cell. And the stem, the stem cells in the body are going to age with the rest of us. Now, as a side note, this is called the Hayflick limit in biology. And what this refers to is that there are a limited number of times that your cells can divide. It's about 50. And you reach this when you get to around age 75 or so. We're going to talk about techniques that you can use today to extend the number of times your cells divide, preserving the length of the telomeres. Uh, that's one of the things we're going to talk about at the event on February 6th. Uh, we're also going to be talking about new developments 
in telomere science, and it is certainly uh, one of the futures of health and science. And there are things that you can do today to preserve your telomeres and live longer and live healthier. And not surprisingly, we have done quite a bit of research in telomere regeneration, and uh, we've actually been quite successful with that. So we'll talk more about that in, in February 6th. So that'd be some things people have a chance to look forward to. Um, also, eventually, as we age, there's no more stem cells. Now, one of the really exciting things about X39, just taking a little peek ahead here, is that it increases the number of stem cells in the body. And we have uh, people that are, we see this all the time in our clinical studies and in real life, people over the age of 70 that shouldn't have any more stem cells in their body get efficacious effects with X39. And this is because X39 is capable of creating new stem cells from the stem cells in your skin. Now, what are the alternatives today? And uh, why is X39 such a good solution in the field of stem cell science? Well, there's very limited access to stem cells today. There are stem cell injections, but they're very expensive. They don't always work and they can have side effects. So there are some risks. And this explains why stem cell therapies are not widely approved by different regulatory bodies around the world, such as the FDA. So we began looking at this problem 12 years ago. Uh, we spent over $4 million in our research and it's been extremely interesting and very, very rewarding. And the basic goal was to see, could we activate the stem cells that are already in someone's body? Instead of injecting stem cells, could we get a person's stem cells to behave like younger, healthier cells? And this would offer enormous advantages. Now, um, I do hold over 70 patents just in the field of stem cells and regenerative science, uh, more than 100 patents collectively. I'm a little bit in, comp in uh, competition with my uncle. He had worked for Bell Labs for many years and he had about 150 patents. And <clears throat> it took me 11 years to get my very first patent. I said, Uncle Paul, I'm gonna catch up to you someday. And he's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you got your first patent. And now that I'm over 100, he's really panicking. Uh, because his his title as the best inventor in the family is, is in serious jeopardy. Um, but I'll, I'll probably pass 150 patents, um, if not by the end of 2021, by the end of 2022. So th this is just to say that we spend a tremendous amount of money on intellectual property and uh, our field of expertise and our mission statement is that we always want to be offering new technology uh, to our distributors and it's proprietary and exclusive. So you won't find this technology any place else. Now, we did uh, some of our initial research with the Regenerative Medicine Institute at the National University of Ireland in Galway. The thing that you would wanna know about them is that they're in the top 2% of universities globally when it comes to stem cell medicine. I made a proposal to Dr. Tim O'Brien, who's the um, head of Remedy. And as a result, he approved the research and we were funded by the Irish government through Scientific Foundation Ireland. Now, this is uh, one of the technologies that I invented and um, I'd like to see this technology end up in LifeWave someday and we've thought about a number of different ways of introducing it. Um, but this is, this is a really interesting method for activating stem cells in the body. Uh, the university required that we do our laboratory testing, animal testing before we ever get to human beings. And so what we would do is uh, induce 
a ulceration or a wound in the ear of the rabbit, uh, we would give them a treatment and then we would see how do the rabbits that are getting treated with this electromagnetic therapy do in comparison to the control group. We also had a group in a, in a later study where stem cells were applied to the wound. And this is what the injury looks like. In our very first try, uh, without attempting to optimize this, we saw that activating the stem cells in a healthy body results in an increase in the motility rate and ability of the stem cell to release growth factors and heal an injury as compared to a control. And very interestingly, if you apply stem cells directly to the injury, it heals at the same rate as the electromagnetic therapy. So long story short, you don't have to get stem cell injections. You can use energy, electromagnetism, light, to activate the stem cells already in your body for facilitating healing. So this is really exciting. Now we work with planaria at our labs in San Diego. This is a type of flatworm and the planaria have incredible regenerative capabilities. You cut off the head of the planaria and a new head will grow in 17 days. Researchers are trying to figure out how do you get it down to 15 days? On our very first try, we regenerated the head of a planaria in eight days. Our most sophisticated version, which received uh, US and international patents, we were able to regenerate the head of a planaria in only 16 and a half hours. We're actually able to see wound closure once the head was severed in less than 15 minutes. So I'm gonna actually elaborate on this more at the February 6th conference and uh, talk about how we're going to be introducing this technology so that people can have access to it and uh, what we've been able to do with it. Um, so I'll, I'll be speaking about that more. But for those of you that are Marvel superhero fans like I am, this would make Wolverine jealous. <laughs> so that's great. Now this is uh, <laughs> that that therapy that I showed you is very expensive, uh, and it, it's not available today because it's not approved yet for for the use of treating the human body. So we really want to make stem cell therapy inexpensive and affordable to everyone. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have been developing light therapy products for almost 20 years now. We have over 80 clinical studies. I can't emphasize this enough. When we make statements about how these products work, it's because we've studied them for 18 years uh, over a course of over 80 clinical studies and we have more studies that are ongoing, nine clinical studies that are going on right now. And basically uh, what's going on with this is we are using a patch. The patch contains organic materials that when activated by body heat will reflect light. So you put the patch on the body, you can apply it pretty much anywhere. If you want to apply it at the site of an injury, you can do that. Um, we recommend either behind the neck or below the belly button. That's what we use in our clinical studies, but you can really apply it anywhere. Once you apply the patch, it's activated by your body heat and it will begin to stimulate the surface of the skin with light. Now, this is going to stimulate the nerves and the acupuncture points on the surface of the skin. And it will produce a effect that's known as photobiomodulation. The way most people know this is you go out in the sun and light will cause the body to make vitamin D. 
So in other words, it's been very well documented through over 5,000 clinical studies that light will cause chemical changes in the body. We take advantage of this principle and use light to activate stem cells. If you'd like more information about this, by the way, go to the science section of our website where you can see uh, quite a few of the clinical studies that we have performed. Now, how do we activate the stem cells? Just like the example where sunlight will elevate vitamin D, we wanna use light to elevate a peptide known as GHKCU or copper peptide for short. This uh, peptide was actually discovered almost 50 years ago now by Dr. Lauren Picard. And Dr. Picard dedicated his life to studying uh, copper peptide and its effects. And he discovered some really remarkable things. He should win a Nobel Prize for this discovery. But he basically found that this one single peptide would reset thousands of genes in the body to a younger, healthier state and also cause the stem cells in the body to proliferate or mobilize or activate. So what this means is you elevate your copper peptide and now the stem cells will go and seek out an injury, and they will be functioning like a younger, healthier cell. And we can see the effects of this in many of the case studies and the testimonials. Now, you may be asking yourself, how do we know that X39 elevates copper peptide? Well, we have I've done quite a few studies now to document this. We measure this through blood and through urine, principally through blood, but we do metabolic studies through urine to see the effects. So this was one of the studies that we did. It was our initial study, which was a 10 person uh, pilot study. Uh, we since then we've done a 50 person double blind placebo controlled study, but long story short, um, in people over the age of 60, we saw right within the first 24 hours, a statistically significant increase in copper peptide. And that continues on through the first week. So it basically means that uh, the majority of people that use X39 are going to start to see results within the first 24 hours and within the first seven days. Now, here's another study that we did. Um, this was a double-blind placebo-controlled study with 50 people. And again, we wanna find out what effects occur as quickly as the first 24 hours and the first seven days. We have looked at longer-term studies, by the way. We just completed a one-year study. So we know quite a bit about this product and what it does over the long term. But basically, when you wear X39, it's going to improve your metabolism. It, increase, it increases protein synthesis. And this explains how when you wear X39, it helps to facilitate repair of injuries and recovery of muscle after exercise. We also see very favorable changes in brain chemistry. X39 is going to improve your long-term, mid-term, and short-term memory. There's also a relaxation response in the nervous system. And within seven days, we even see a statistically significant reduction in blood pressure with people that have elevated blood pressure. We see the quality of sleep improve within the first 24 hours. We see overall levels of energy and vitality improve within the first week. We even see breathing improve. So in other words, when you are activating the stem cells, it affects nearly every measure of human health. 
So that makes this a very, very powerful product. And it means that just about anyone who uses X39 is going to experience a benefit. Now, one of the areas that we've been extremely interested in, and you're going to hear more about this at our conference on February 6th, is in the area of the brain. Now, there are some extraordinarily interesting ways that we can document effects on the health of the brain. And also, we've been researching new ways that we can activate stem cells in the brain for a variety of health benefits. This is one that we've performed with Dr. Gaetan Chevalier. Uh, he is a uh, nuclear engineer, by the way. Uh, his specialty is laser spectroscopy. And our initial uh, clinical studies that we've performed with him going back almost 10 years were on looking at light emission from the body and how we could improve the coherence of light emission for improving human health. And that project was successful. Um, in this study, it was our first study, and we've, again, since then, we followed it up with a 50-person study. Every single person in this study had a dramatic effect. And the participants were over the age of 50. So this is really important because most people, as they age, are going to be concerned that as they get over the age of 50 and 60, they're not going to be quite as sharp as they used to be. And what's so exciting about this is that there are multiple tools such as X39 and other natural products and even other patch products that we have that will create dramatic improvements in the health of the brain. And it doesn't take very long. Let's take a look at these uh, images. Session two is only three weeks after using X39. Session three is six weeks. And take a look, this is in a woman that is 77 years old. We would expect in someone 77, they wouldn't have virtually any stem cell activity in the body. Yet in three weeks, she experienced a dramatic improvement in the coherence of her brain waves. That's what this graph is showing. And as a result, she will feel more relaxed and uh, various markers of brain activity, such as memory, focus, learning, speed of processing, all these things improve. Now, some people take a little bit longer. If you have someone that's in generally good health, but they're older, they have a clean diet, they exercise, they're gonna respond better than someone that's a smoker, doesn't eat right, maybe is overweight. So we wanna always look at a cross section of the population. So this gentleman, 67 years old, he did have an improvement after three weeks, but you can see it took a little bit longer with him. It took six weeks before he saw a dramatic change. So this is all to say that if you don't see a favorable uh, improvement in your first week or two, hang in there. You may be somebody that takes a little bit longer to respond. Okay, now what happens in real life? What happens when we activate stem cells? Well, one of the things that stem cells are going to do remarkably well is improve the rate of healing. Stem cells make lots of collagen. They activate the fibroblasts. And so they're going to be great at supporting wound healing. And the injury doesn't even have to be new. In this particular case, uh, this was a gentleman that had open heart surgery, and he didn't use X39 until July of 2018 when it was introduced. So this scar was a year old. And you can see in only 30 days, a dramatic reduction in the appearance of that scar. Here's a newer injury. And again, after only two weeks, a dramatic improvement. Where do you apply the patch? Well, you could apply it 
behind the neck, below the belly button. If you want to apply it at the site of the injury, you can certainly do that. Uh, here's a young man. He's the son of one of our members in France. And he had a job interview coming up and uh, he was in this uh, snowboarding accident. And you can see after five days, a remarkable improvement. This is incredible. Uh, this fellow nearly lost his hand from a car accident. And after only two months of wearing X39, the scar is barely visible. Now, this young boy, uh, nine years old in Denmark, did lose the tip of his finger. His parents rushed him to the hospital. Um, the doctor said, you know, I'm sorry, uh, there's nothing really we can do. And the father begged with the doctor to reattach it. And the doctor said, well, it's going to die, but I'll do it. And you can see it turn black. They applied X39. And to everyone's amazement, after only two months, uh, the finger worked perfectly. And doctor said this shouldn't even be possible. Now, you don't have to have an injury to use X39. What will this do for someone that's healthy? Well, again, uh, stem cells make collagen, and as we age, the production of collagen decreases. Here you can see uh, this woman, Mandy, in Australia. Uh, she used X39 for general health, and she was very, very pleased with the results, so she continued. And now you can see, after a year, the effects of getting your stem cells to act like younger, healthier cells. Now, this was actually the first testimonial that we received on what we would refer to as youth renewal, getting those stem cells to act like younger cells. This woman's uh, daughter is a uh, LifeWave distributor, and her mom, I uh, was pictured, was suffering with a number of uh, serious health conditions. She thought, well, let's, let me give her X39 to improve her health. And to everyone's amazement, she went through this dramatic transformation over a period of two months. Now, I'm often asked, if you're using X39, what patches could you use with X39? Well, you, you can use a variety of them, but one of the ones that I recommend is Eon. Eon is a broad spectrum anti-inflammatory. The patch helps to relax the nervous system. It works incredibly quick. You can use it either during the day or the evening, but why would we want to match this with X39? Well, this was actually discovered in uh, La Jolla, California, which is uh, part of San Diego area, that stem cells are attracted to inflammation. That probably makes perfect sense, actually, because you want to get stem cells to the site of an injury, and injuries have inflammation. The problem is that once the stem cells get there, it's actually the inflammation that kills the stem cell. So this is why it's often very difficult to heal an old injury. So you can apply Eon directly at the point of pain or inflammation. It will help to bring the pain and inflammation down. And now when you use X39, those stem cells can get to the injury site and they can be more effective and more efficient. Okay. David, okay. thank you so much. I want to, uh, like you, take a break so you can drink some water. <laughs> and, um, I need some water. Yeah, we have some questions here. We put them actually on the slide because some people are visual. So um, so I've curated, curated the questions so that we are avoiding um, uh, diagnoses um, because uh, because FTC, FDA rules, we can't talk about life wave treating, preventing, curing uh, any diseases or diagnoses names. So just know that some of the questions in the live chat will uh, actually do pertain to some of the questions that I've written here 
Um, and then uh, if you have put in a diagnosis, we're, we're not going to be able to answer that question. So, um, so if you're live on the call, you actually may also see that there are some files shared with you. We have an X39 information sheet for, especially for the brand new people, it's just a one page summary of the X39 patch, what it does. Same thing with the Eon information sheet. You can download that if you're live on the call. And then the uh, LifeWip Experiencer chart, which basically is a chart of all the different patches we currently have. And there's green check marks and yellow check marks. The green check marks mean that um, David and his team have actually done um, scientific studies to uh, base claims. So that's the green check marks. The yellow check marks uh, are what us as clinicians and users have noticed anecdotally. So we just wanted to make that clear. Some of the effects that we've noticed are not in the, um, you know, in the science part of the website, uh, but anything with a green check mark has been corroborated by um, really awesome science. And then David, I want to share with you our poll here about what people are interested in today. And uh, a whopping 25% was uh, interested in reverse aging as their, you know, um, uh, number one support issue, pain relief was a close second, well, sort of close second, 13% uh, healthier immune system um, and repair damaged tissues and organs. So those were the, the biggies and there was a little bit on, you know, hormone balance and uh, better sleep, but those were the four that were the most important. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. So we'll go to the next slide and I will, I can read the questions off and, um, yeah, so uh, some of these are, we're starting with some of the simple questions, David, <laughs> uh, that some people have asked over and over and over again, and it's better to hear it from you uh, than necessarily sure from me. Why are the patches active for only just 12 hours, and do I really need to take them off after 12 hours for best results? Yeah, the, so there's a variety of ways to answer this. The first thing is the materials that are inside the patch are organic, and they will uh, degrade over time. Uh, and so eventually the patches will no longer be effective. We have a uh, piece of equipment in our laboratory called an FTIR. So we can actually heat the patches up and measure the light emission over or reflectance over a period of time. Uh, the other though really practical reason is that um, it's been discovered through many studies on light therapy that if you continue to hit the body with light, eventually it stops responding. So this is a, a phenomenon known as attenuation. You can think of it as accommodation, but essentially means you can't keep stimulating the body with the same wavelengths of light. Eventually the body's just gonna stop. So what we found uh, in our studies is that 12 hours on, 12 hours off works very, very well. Uh, we may find out in the future that there's a better methodology but this one's really simple. You wake up in the morning, put the patch on, and then you take it off before going to sleep. Um, also, our patches are designed to trap body heat because they're activated by heat. And if you leave the patch on too long, eventually it's going to irritate the skin and uh, also irritate the acupuncture points and nerves that are there. So 12 hours is, is a fair amount of time. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Next question, uh, what are the ingredients in the patch and how come they aren't listed on the package insert? My clinician friend wants to know. Well, none of the materials in the patch enter the body, so we don't have an obligation to disclose that. And there are some proprietary things there. So all we do is we make a general statement that the patches contain amino acids, sugars, water, oxygen, and um, some other things, but they're all natural uh, organic materials and uh, you could ingest them you know, without any harm. Of course, you don't wanna eat the patch because it is made of plastic, uh, but the materials inside are completely uh, non-toxic and safe. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Um, yeah, somebody was concerned about sugar because they're diabetic, so. <laughs> Has no bearance on, on this. Actually, uh, if anything, what we have seen um, is that the patches do a wonderful job of helping to support healthy blood sugar. Now, I want to be careful not to make a claim here, uh, especially a medical claim. But uh, if, if one were interested, I would uh, highly suggest uh, taking a look at the role of glutathione and carnosine in blood sugar management. Um, as a side note, supplementation of alpha-lipoic acid, 
over a period of, of uh, quite a few hours, four to eight hours, is very, very effective at blood sugar control. And also X39, we have certainly seen anecdotally uh, something that we may study has remarkable benefits in the area of blood sugar control. And that, that is uh, one of the things that we're interested in. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's gonna do the opposite. Yeah, that's a, that's interesting. I think Renata and I were on a call the other day, right, with one one of your folks that uh, who's had to, uh, and he's very very diligent about it. So he's had to decrease his insulin requirements. And what's really fascinating is that um, so he was born that way. He's, he's not the type two diabetic, the type one no. that required insulin for since you know whenever. <laughs> so yeah. uh, really wow. long time. So that's kind of exciting. So yeah. let's go to our next question. So why does my package have little plastic balls and do I really need to use them? Okay, well, um, in the United States and the European Union, we are regulated as a phototherapy device. However, in a number of countries, they don't have this category. And uh, so the next best option for us was with acupressure. So we did a study where we placed uh, this plastic ball under the patch and then applied it to the surface of the skin. And what we found was that it applied an equivalent amount of pressure that's accepted as acupressure. So there are different acupressure devices. Uh, one of them is called a bio band that uses a plastic ball and it applies a specific amount of pressure to the skin. And we found that our patch was an equivalent. So for the sake of convenience um, and regulatory approval, we get our patches uh, registered as acupressure devices in certain countries. Taiwan uh, might be a good example um, and so forth. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we just have a couple of testimonials here. Uh, one person said they have a 91 year old that had tremors from a specific diagnosis and uh, after three days the tremors are gone it hasn't come back <laughs> which is Amazing. super awesome um, and then patricia says x39 and ice wave saved my life no more pain in the spine and no more doctor's appointments awesome. yeah yeah and feel free to put more testimonials guys uh if you're live with us the next question is are the patches registered with or approved by the fda yeah, so we are in a category called general wellness, and this is a category that came about in 2015, and we hopped right on it because it, it fits our product line perfectly. So basically, the FDA says that if you have a product that improves the flow of energy through the body, uh, improves energy, improves quality of the sleep, other uh, general lifestyle improvements, then you don't need to seek um registration with the FDA. So the FDA has several classes, class one, two, and three. Uh, class two device might be um, an electronic device, uh, could be a disposable medical device. Class three would be a drug. Uh, class one are things like tongue depressors. And we don't really fit uh, into any of those categories. So we're self-registered under general wellness. Uh, we get inspected every one to two years, and we've never had an issue with the FDA. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Next question. Uh, the patches all look the same. What's the difference between what's in the glutathione patch versus the X39 patch, for example? Well, uh, I would say that looks can be deceiving. It's not, also, it's not so much what's in them, but how the patches are made. I guess I would say it that way. And again, this steps on a little bit of the proprietary nature of, of how we make them. The important thing is that nothing that is in the patch is uh, entering the body. Um, what we're trying to do is use the materials that are in the patches to reflect very specific wavelengths of light. So the important difference between LifeWave Tech and um, other forms of light therapy, I would look at it this way. Um, if we have an active device like a laser, the laser is going to emit a very specific wavelength of light. Let's say 660 nanometers might be a common wavelength that's used to stimulate collagen production in the skin. Um, now, that uh, laser light 
is not going to contain any information. So if you could hear it, it would just be kind of like a, a hum. Now compare that to a musical instrument. The uh, waveforms coming off a musical instrument are very complex and they contain lots of information and it's what allows the musical instrument like a trumpet or a violin to sound the way that they do. The life wave patch is the same way. We use a blend of complex waveforms to achieve specific signaling so that we can activate specific peptides. So it is light therapy, uh, but it's a very, very sophisticated form of light therapy. Mm, that's super interesting. I remember before people were, when LifeWay first started out, when people were trying to figure out, is this like a magnet, you know, and right. uh, one of my, one of my uh, healer teachers actually, who's very clairvoyant, um, she uh, had started using magnets and then she stopped because people were coming in from this, I won't say the name of the company, but, um, you know, sharing magnets with each other and they were getting improvements, uh, you know, in their symptoms. And then, but she could see what was happening. And she said, why do you have holes in your head? <laughs> the guy's like, what are you talking about? And she didn't understand why there were auric holes in the head. Like she could see these holes. And then he said that he was sleeping with this magnetic pillow and a magnetic you know, thing. And I, I, at, I, at the point, I didn't really think there could be potentially something harmful, but, but she felt it was harmful, you know, on, from her clairvoyant point of view that that was not okay. Like she shouldn't have. So, you know, I think that the sophistication of the life wave patches, um, you know, that it, that it's so biologically responsive. It's not just what I used to call a dumb, you know, a dumb, a dumb patch, like a, you know, it's a smart patch. So it's right. not like, you know, just this one frequency that's just going to keep going on whatever it is going and ignoring whatever the body's doing. Um, so um, I really appreciate all the science and all the money that, you know, the LifeWave team has put into making sure that these yeah. technologies are safe and effective. Yeah, you know, magnets are a tricky thing. Uh, I began studying magnets when I was quite young. And uh, a good book uh, that's still relevant today is Magnetism and its Effect on the Living System by Albert Roy Davis and Walter Rawls. And it gets into the complexities of magnetism and why using a North Pole magnet versus a South Pole magnet produces very, very different effects. So for example, someone that has cancer, if they use a South Pole magnet, it can actually make the cancer more aggressive. Whereas a North Pole magnet uh, will tend to sedate the cancer cells. And uh, most manufacturers of magnetic therapy devices, they have no idea uh, about the differences in the polarity of the magnets, uh, the intensity, the thresholds of magnetism. Um, I have dozens of patents in magnetic field therapy devices. And so it's something that we put a lot of money into. And uh, the, the truth of the matter is that the human body responds incredibly well when the magnetic fields are very, very weak and also they're applied over a long period of time. They also have to be pulsed in a very specific manner, which almost nobody does. So um, you know, we're often accustomed to thinking, well, I wanna produce a better effect, so let me turn up the power. And um, we've achieved in the example that I used with our magnetic therapy device with the uh, planaria, we were able to achieve um, the regeneration of the planaria head in, in uh, 16 and a half hours with almost no magnetic field. In other words, what we did was we took um, two of these uh, devices and we ap applied them parallel to one another and we used that technique to cancel almost completely the uh, field of the, uh, the magnetic field that was being generated. We used a Gauss meter to find a point of zero magnetism, a, a null field, and that's where we placed the planaria. Now, there in fact was a field there in, in um, we used a, a specific approach in physics where we were looking at nodes and um, these nodes occur in a, uh, another phenomena uh, called phase conjugation, but 
basically what we were looking at was an area of cancellation where traditional physics would say nothing exists. And uh, our perspective on it is no, you, you can take energy and if you cancel it, uh, there's a different field there, which would be a scalar field. And so uh, long story short, if you know what you're doing, you can use these fields to produce uh, remarkable healing effects and there's virtually no energy there. So it, it's very informational. Um, so long story short, I suppose, is that if you're gonna get into um, magnetic field therapy, you really need to know what you're doing. Whereas light therapy is extraordinarily forgiving, uh, very gentle, and it, it turns out this is the way that our, our bodies work. You, we use light as communication. And so we're working with the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, thank you for that. Of course, you would know all this stuff about magnetism. <laughs> Some things, I know a little yeah. bit. Uh, the, next, that. the next general question is, uh, if someone isn't noticing an improvement in their symptoms with X39 within 30 days, what might be the reason and what do you suggest they do? Yeah, you know, so the human body has an annoying habit of working on what it wants to, when it wants to. And uh, this has to do with, uh, you know, a system of priorities uh, and uh, and many times and often this is a uh, area of inflammation and the stem cells are gonna be attracted to that specific site. So um, over time, this is certainly something that's happened over the last ten, uh, two years where people say, well, you know, I was hoping that X39 would fix this one injury and I noticed that this other injury got better faster. And um, so that is a phenomena. But the other side to it is we need to look at our foundation. And this is something that we can't ignore, right? As much as uh, many people want to ignore the foundation. So that is to say, uh, we should do an introspective and look at how are we managing our lives? What's our diet like? Are we exercising as often as we should? Are we getting proper sleep? What's our level of hydration? Are we supplementing? to make up for any uh, nutritional deficiencies in our diet? Are we avoiding things like uh, excessive amounts of coffee and alcohol? You know, we really need to take inventory of these things. So when anyone is gonna use our products or any other health products, the first thing is to uh, take a look at our foundation. And if you're you know, partying all night and uh, you're only getting four hours of sleep, uh, don't expect that uh, the patches are going to help you as well as they could. So that's what I'd, I'd really suggest is, um, is to take a look at that. And then secondly, some people, they legitimately take a little bit longer to heal for a variety of reasons. Uh, we had a gentleman that had a, an 18-year-old uh, injury from a motorcycle accident. He had a damaged thumb and uh, took about three months of using X39 for the injury to heal, but it healed completely. So uh, there could be any number of reasons that would be some of them. I, one thing I would definitely point to would be hydration and mineralization. So there are chronic min mineral deficiencies today of calcium, potassium, magnesium. Uh, magnesium will participate in over 300 metabolic reactions in the body. Over 60%, maybe even over 80% of the population is a magnesium deficiency. So these are the, the type of things that people can look at uh, and uh, as a way to improve their overall health and their experience with our products. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I bunched these all together because I had to do with pets. So can we use patches for our pets, such as dogs and cats? If so, can we use any of the patches? And what kind of research has LifeWave done on animals? And if an animal accidentally eats or chews up a patch, is it toxic? Okay. So I will tell you that I am an animal lover. My daughter and I have an Australian Shepherd and a Rottweiler. And uh, so we will often patch them for a variety of reasons. Um, yes, you know, uh, from a legal point of view, it's not something that we can uh, recommend because of the way FDA uh, handles products with, um, how the FDA handles products with animals. So we conducted research on IceWave uh, and Eon, 
and we were applying those to horses and to dogs. Uh, we did this study with medical infrared imaging, and uh, we also used an electroacuscope and a simple palpation. And uh, we had a number of those studies published. And uh, basically what we found is that uh, those products work very, very well on animals. So this is why we started AccuLife. We had to legally separate uh, the product uh, and put it into a different category in order for the FDA to allow us to apply the products to animals. So um, if you want to use the patches on animals, you can do that. There's really no reason why you can't. Uh, we would have to get each of the patches tested and then uh, put through FDA to apply them to animals. And we just simply haven't done that because of other priorities. Mm -hmm. Now, if an animal were to accidentally chew the patch, uh, there's nothing toxic in the patches. The ingredients are organic, but they are plastic. Um, so I would take your pet to a vet, explain what happened, show them a sample of the patch. Uh, the pet, if it's a dog, it might pass the patch normally, um, but I would let a veterinarian make that decision. Great, thank you. And uh, Anna, I just wanna give Anna Kadina uh, two thumbs up. Uh, she's been handling all sorts of questions uh, on the chat while we are uh, you know, doing the presentation. She's one of our uh, top team members. So thank you so much, Anna, for doing that. Um, okay, so next question. My friend is pregnant. Can she use patches? What if she's nursing? Any patch, uh, uh, any particular patch, a contraindication? Yeah, you know, so we have not done studies on women that are pregnant or nursing. So we have to say from an ethical uh, point of view that because we haven't done those studies, we do not know if the patches would be safe uh, for women that are pregnant or nursing. So at this time, we can't make that recommendation. Uh, we don't know if there would be contraindications or not. Uh, Dr. Karen, you probably know, I'm sure, uh, that there are certain acupuncture points that you definitely don't stimulate for uh, a woman that's pregnant. You could induce labor. And so uh, while the points that we recommend should be safe uh, because people do apply them in other places, we wouldn't wanna take those chances. So um, yeah, we, we can't recommend it. If you're working with a practitioner, uh, that's a different story, but uh, we can't recommend it. Right, and as a practitioner, um, I, you know, when people ask me, I said, look, if it was me or my patient, um, I would much rather use patches uh, for, you know, pain relief, for stress relief, you know, than uh, a pill. <laughs> uh, because a lot of pregnant women, the baby's sitting a funny way, their SI joint hurts, you know, and before they give them a pill or if they're, you know, um, I mean, they've used uh, even antidepressants during the uh, pregnancy, which I'm like, Ugh, you know, um, so I, because it's light, because nothing goes through the body, I personally believe it's much safer, uh, but I understand like if the company can't make that claim, you know, that it's safe because there are no studies, but as a clinician, I was more than happy to recommend those, um, especially when, when the options were, you know, needles and pills and other things that could be much more harmful. Because with the patch, if there's, for whatever reason, if there's some sort of effect that somebody didn't like, you just take it off and then the signal's gone. So it's, it's very safe that way. I had met a number of years ago, a medical doctor from Singapore who was using the patches on women during delivery. And I had asked him, well, where are you applying them? Oh, he said, well, I've gotten it to the point I can use three patches and they don't need an epidural. And they're completely out of pain. And I said, well, how do you do that? Where are you applying the patches? And he said, well, that's my secret. And uh, I, I begged him, I bought him lunch, uh, bought him dinner. He, he wouldn't, he wouldn't he, tell he me. You, really? He wouldn't tell me. I begged him and he wouldn't tell me. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. Oh, all right. Well, the next question is, can patches be used safely in children? I would say that as a general guide, if you want to use the patches with children, let's say for pain relief, um, the child should be old enough where they can talk and communicate if they have a contraindication. So what would that be? Well, for example, 
um, with detox reactions, you could have a child uh, feel fatigue, headache, nausea, and you want to have them be able to communicate that. Uh, and then, of course, you'd remove the patches and give them lots of water to drink. So let's say around the age of five or so uh, is, is okay, is safe, and you could use patches like Eon, Glutathione, Ice Wave uh, to help with pain. Okay, thank you. All right, um, where can we look up professional athletes that are using patches? On our website, you go to the news section of the website and you're gonna see plenty of athletes that are there using the patches. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> what's the maximum number of patches we can use in any 12 hour period? And what do you personally use daytime and nighttime, David? Well, I am going to be talking about my personal protocol on February 6th, and I'll be getting into uh, quite a bit of detail about it relative to age reversal. So we are in the age of age reversal, and we're going to see new technologies over the next several years, 10 years, 20 years, that are going to continue to push us in the direction of complete human age reversal. Now, the exciting thing is that there are already technologies that exist today that people can use to keep them young much, much longer than what they might think. And I'll be talking about that, and this is based on uh, solid research, not on speculation. Now, for my personal protocol, and I'll, be, uh, I'll give full disclosure on this, um, right now, I have X39 on the back of the neck. I have a patch that we've been in development with below my belly button. And you're going to be hearing about this patch on February 6th. Uh, and you'll also be hearing about it next year. Uh, prior to that, I was wearing carnosine daily below my belly button. I also have another patch. It's up over here. That one is an experimental, but that one you're going to have to wait a few years. Uh, this one has gone through pretty extensive human testing. We're very excited about it, um, but we want to collect a little bit more data. We're going to be making a pretty big claim about this patch, and we need we need a lot of uh, evidence to to support the claim. But people will be very excited about it when they find out what it does. Um, I also have on two sets of energy patches. I always like to have energy patches, one set on my upper torso and another set on the lower torso. Just found for myself um, that, uh, that I like the effects from that. Now, other, there are many other possibilities on patching protocols. And on any given day, when we're testing a new patch or uh, I'm using any of the existing patches, I might mix it up. Um, when I travel, I like to use the glutathione patch a little bit more frequently uh, because of detox effects. Um, at night, I really enjoy using the Eon patch. For years, I always use the Eon patch during the day, uh, but I find uh, I put the Eon patch on about an hour before I go to sleep. It makes me very, very relaxed, and, and I have a good night's sleep. Um, so that would be my personal protocol. Uh, and for maximum number of patches, it really depends on what it is that you're trying to achieve. I would say be strategic. Uh, one patch usually is enough. There are very isolated circumstances under which you need more than one of any one type of patch. Um, this would get into the area of making some claims, but let's say, I'll, I'll just give one example. Let's say that someone had a sore throat. We found through practical experience that applying glutathione, uh, let's say the sore throat was right through here, one to each side, one above, one below, so four glutathione. And in a few minutes, most people get significant uh, reduction in the sore throat. Wow, wow, very cool. Yep. Thank you. Um, how do you patch for pain using Eon and X39 if you don't have Ice Wave or instead of Ice Wave? Yeah, so there's a number of ways to do this. 
And I would say it also depends on the type of pain. So let's say we took uh, someone that has Parkinson's disease and they're suffering with tremors, they're suffering with pain. We know that Parkinson's disease, um, what's indicated is a deficiency of glutathione. It's very, very well known. Glutathione is neuroprotective. And when people have Parkinson's, they have a deficiency of glutathione. And even today, glutathione is going mainstream for Parkinson's. Many medical doctors will give their patients IVs of glutathione to help with Parkinson's symptoms. The problem with this is that glutathione has a half-life of seven minutes. So about an hour after getting that IV, the glutathione is gone. Uh, as uh, compared to the patch, they have the glutathione levels elevated while you're, while you're wearing the patch. So the first thing is we want to match up the product to the type of pain that we're trying to manage. Now, Eon and X39 are always going to be great choices because Eon is a broad spectrum anti-inflammatory. And of course, with X39 activating stem cells, we can get some long-term benefits. So the simplest protocol would be to apply X39 behind the neck and then Eon directly at the point of pain. And that's really it. It doesn't have to be much more complicated than that. When we're using IceWave, there's a number of protocols that are extremely successful. Um, and I would suggest looking at the uh, IceWave uh, instruction for use to look at some of those protocols. And uh, of course, um, Karen, you and I have done trainings in the past, you know, an hour, two hours on uh, various ice wave protocols so they can get uh, both complicated and elegant. But I would say just keep it simple, Eon right at the point of pain. Uh, and again, depending, it really depends on what type of condition you're patching for. Mm -hmm. I, I think that Dr. Quiley, who's here on the call today, um, she used to uh, have people hold the glutathione on the right hand, or that might be your idea, but she was telling me about it. Um, and then oftentimes the person would get out of pain while they were holding the glutathione. And, they're sort of, and this is before X39, so she was using Ice Wave. And then if they didn't get down to a zero, she would hold the glutathione. And then the, oftentimes the pain would decrease, which I thought was fascinating. I, I, I tend to be very conservative with the glutathione just because of how sleepy I was the first three weeks. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Using right. it. And I mean, of course, it cleared all the bumps, you know, my skin had hundreds and hundreds of zits. And I, now I, I have the best skin ever. Um, and uh, but uh, so with, you know, pregnant women, I tell them not to use the glutathione patch. Um, and uh, even breastfeeding, I tell them not to use it. I just theoretically, you know, because the, the toxins are getting out of their hiding places and potentially getting into, you know, blood flow, lymph, you know, I just don't know where the toxins are going to go. But I totally understand that sometimes, you know, people get better pain relief when they have a glutathione on. So yeah, it depends on which it depends on the condition. Uh, glutathione definitely should not be underestimated as, as you're pointing out. Uh, and yeah, I think for full disclosure, that could have been Dr. Quile, it could have been Dr. Steve. That sounds like something that Dr. Holtewanger would have done. Uh, so it could have been either one of them. <laughs> All right, great. Um, okay, so do, do you need a little stretch break there, David? Because I know we're going to an hour. I'm good. Hour, but, okay, great. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Uh, what patches do you recommend to support or balance the immune system? Yeah, so I'm going to be careful about making claims because a lot of network marketing companies have gotten in trouble the past year uh, with the FTC for making claims about immune function. It seems that, um, yeah, our, our government doesn't like it when we use natural products to improve the immune system. Uh, you know, and that said, uh, in all fairness, there were a number of companies that were extremely irresponsible. We know that uh, COVID, uh, the, that the coronavirus in this case was quite novel and to be making claims that a product could treat the novel coronavirus without a clinical study, I find irresponsible. So if we're going to talk about general support of the immune system, there's going to be a few rules that apply. 
but this is something that we want to stay away from unless there's clinical evidence, which we might have. Um, but that's another story. <laughs> so, you know, first thing, when we look at the immune system, again, I would come back to this idea that what we want to do is have a strong foundation. So not getting enough sleep, that's going to weaken the immune response, not being properly hydrated. Uh, exercise is an amazing way to uh, support the overall strength and health of the immune system for a variety of reasons. And of course, it goes without saying that your diet is going to have an enormous impact on the health and function of the immune system. Um, the immune system, of course, is extraordinarily complex, uh, but one of the, the ways that we can boil this down into a simplistic discussion is that we have antioxidants and oxidative chemicals, which both play a role in the function of the immune system. Now, when uh, there's an injury in the body, the body is going to release oxidative chemicals and these are going to help to push down the presence of uh, bacteria and help reduce the incidence of infection. So not surprisingly, oxygen therapies um, have been popular for decades as a way for supporting the overall health of the immune system. Now to counterbalance oxygen, we have antioxidants. So antioxidants are more about protecting tissue and so antioxidants like glutathione are going to support the overall health and function of the immune system. So uh, if we're just talking about maintaining health, we know that copper peptide will support the health of the gut and the health of the immune system. Glutathione is very powerful. And even applying the energy patches at specific locations in acupuncture, we would say stomach 36 or kidney 27. Um, these are gonna be, amongst others, are gonna be powerful points that we can stimulate to support the overall health and function of the immune system. Um, but I'd first start with the, uh, with the foundation of the body, getting proper rest, exercise, et cetera, and then uh, looking at the glutathione patch, energy patches, uh, Eon can also help the immune system indirectly by helping to keep down chronic inflammation. Uh, these are all uh, valuable methods. Right. And then, of course, the X39, which you mentioned earlier. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, we have a question about how uh, or which patches do you recommend to support the vagus nerve? I'm not sure everyone knows what that is, but... Um, so the vagus nerve is part of the autonomic nervous system, and um, this person is interested because they have been told or have been reading that the vagus nerve that helps with that relaxation response is very, very important in the body, and there's now telesummits based on parasympathetic response and based on the vagus nerve. So that I think it's becoming more and more. And 10, and uh, this study, I believe, is posted to our website. Um, Dr. Budzinski was a, a brilliant scientist, and we used a piece of equipment um, made by a company that was called Thought Technology. And this equipment looked at the action of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And basically what he found, which he felt was extraordinary, is that within seconds of applying the Eon patch, uh, just to the back of the neck or below the, the belly button, we saw that the um, autonomic nervous system would shift into a state of balance. So you could look at this as being, uh, if you were to take a graph or take a piece of paper and you draw a giant plus sign on it, you could have the human body be in different states between uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic. So sympathetic is gonna be when we're in an agitated state, a state of adrenaline, parasympathetic is a state of relaxation. Uh, neither one is healthy. So in other words, if you're too relaxed, 
the immune system actually becomes depressed. If you're constantly driving in a sympathetic mode, this is also gonna degrade immune function and health. So we wanna be in, in a state of balance. And the Eon patch is going to be the best way to support the overall health of the nervous system. Fantastic, and one of my favorites, as you know. <laughs> yep, yep, I, I absolutely do know that. <laughs> um, this is a little bit long, but uh, it's my understanding that there are no negative side effects or risks from X39 stimulating the renewal of our own body stem cells. In my research of stem cell therapy, it speaks to the risks of tumor formation and possible mutation of disease cells, et cetera. Why would there be a risk of using traditional stem cell therapy injections versus LifeWave X39 phototherapy? Yeah, a number of reasons. Uh, first thing is copper peptide, which is what we're elevating, is a naturally occurring peptide in the human body. Um, like other peptides, as we age, the production of copper peptide decreases. So what we're simply doing is restoring the levels of copper peptide to normal, healthy levels, what we would find in someone that would be in their 20s or 30s. Now, I prefer to use the definition of cancer as uh, defined by Stanford University on their website. And th this definition, uh, which is now widely accepted, uh, talks about the inducement of and formation of cancer cells through mutation by a carcinogen. And so basically what happens is we introduce a cancer-causing compound into the human body. This compound will cause a mutation in a normal healthy stem cell. And now the stem cell will uh, be reverted into a cancer cell. This also explains why there's so many different forms of cancer. So if we want to treat cancer, one of the very important components is detoxification. We've got to get the foreign chemical that's in our body out that was responsible for causing the cancer in the stem cells in the first place. So simply uh, elevating copper peptide and resetting cells to a younger, healthier state um, is, is not going to cause those stem cells to turn into cancer cells. The, can the cancer cells are formed from stem cells as a result of a carcinogen that's in the presence of the stem cell. Mm, I see. And, and you said earlier from Dr. Lauren Picard's work that the um, GHK copper peptide resets thousands of genes. So that makes me think that, well, that's a, you know, good thing. Like if, if there's a problem with the genes that gets reset, am I, you know, is that, am I getting that correctly? It's or? a, it's a great thing. It's a mm. great thing now. And we're getting into some things where, uh, we don't want to make claims, but what I would say is that, uh, anyone that's interested in the subject should take a look at a number of the articles uh, that have been published on copper peptide. And what they're gonna find is that copper peptide is potentially an incredibly useful compound in uh, a number of different areas where we'd wanna use it therapeutically. Um, we're a health and wellness company, so we can't make those claims. Um, but it, it, is, uh, it is something that I think anyone that is in the health field, they should be interested in and they should look at. Mm, fantastic. So we've, before we go on, I... Um... Just wanted to share that, um, you know, for everyone that's on the call, I know there's about a third of you that have not tried LifeWave patches. So if you've been invited to this call uh, by someone who's a LifeWave distributor or customer, please get back to them if you'd like to try the product or maybe even, um, you know, interview to be part of the business. If you happen to be invited by me or, um, you know, you you stumbled upon, you know, the registration and you don't have anyone um, that referred you, then you can more than happy to speak with one of my team members. Um, and there is a little pop up there uh, on the right hand side if you're on the live call um, and you can just click that book, uh, book a free consult. Just please for everyone to, to click that only, <laughs> only if you don't have someone already referring you and you have not tried patches before, um, because we have a very limited number of appointments available. So 
just wanted to share that before I move on. Um, this one's interesting. My 11 year old grandson has attention, focus, hyperactivity, anxiety, depression issues. My son feels panicky a lot for no reason. This is actually two people in one. I just put them together. Could you suggest patches that would help with uh, improving mood, calming and focus? Well, there could be any number of different things going on here. I would say that a uh, medical doctor uh, should probably make a diagnosis, uh, get some blood tests, find out what's going on here. Uh, glutathione might be an interesting patch to start with. Um, after that, though, the, there are a number of possibilities. One would be Eon for the hyperactivity. Um, also might help with anxiety. But for the uh, depression and anxiety, I might recommend Nirvana. And Nirvana is going to uh, elevate beta endorphins, and these are the feel-good hormones in the brain, uh, and also support normal, healthy uh, dopamine levels in the brain. So these would be some things to take a look at, but because um, the child is 11 and this is a serious health condition, uh, you'd wanna work with uh, the child's medical doctor on any of these recommendations uh, just to make sure that they're not gonna cause any type of harm. For example, if the, the child was developing uh, bipolar, then they might respond to something that would be normal and healthy in, in a very different way. Hmm. Okay, sounds good. Um, one person says, I don't have strength in one of my hands and can't close it completely. What patches would you recommend and where would you put them? Well, I would have to be guessing with this, um, but there could be some degeneration in the nerves that's creating this problem. And I would have to speculate. Uh, and so I would say on the one hand, I don't have enough information, but if we're just gonna take a little bit of a shot in the dark, I might recommend X39 and the carnosine patch. So carnosine is a mild anabolic. It's stored in the muscle tissue. That's also stored in the brain and the heart. And uh, carnosine uh, will help to buffer the formation of lactic acid so it improves stamina. And it also can help to volumize the muscle tissue. So this may be a benefit depending on, on what the uh, cause is. Uh, if it's degeneration of the nerves, X39 could be of help with this. Um, since it's in the hands, uh, maybe one of the points, I don't know, Karen, how you feel about this. What would you think about the gamut point? <laughs> I'm not sure which one that was. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, that's this one over here. Oh, one of my favorites. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So near triple burner three. Um, yeah. I think anywhere close to the hand since, you know, the, the patch, uh, as, as Dr. Steve used to say, you know, we found an effect through a, you know, six inch block of wood. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So, so anywhere in that vicinity would be good. Um, cause obviously putting it in the middle of the palm isn't very, you know, very convenient because people are washing their hands all the time these days it, it might come off so anywhere close to the hand you know either here or on the back side that's less likely to peel off than on the on the front um, yeah and they could use uh they could use x39 on the back of the neck and then the carnosine patch if there's a point that's painful mm -hmm. uh then they could place the carnosine patch directly on the point of pain uh and that might be one way to go about it okay great yeah thank you yeah. Um, for a person who has had major surgery on the throat and neck last year, followed by 40 se sessions of radiation, what patches would you recommend to speed the healing of the tissues in the throat and neck area? So I think this may be relevant to anyone that's had that sort of treatment in the past and would like to heal, you know, the, the tissue after radiation. Yeah, there's a few things to be done here. Again, uh, I guess I would say I'm not a medical doctor and any medic, any recommendations that I provide you should speak with your medical doctor about them. So, okay, uh, and then the other side to this too, we're going to assume that this person is no longer um, taking any type of chemotherapy or radiation, that they've recovered 
uh, from their illness. So let's just set that as some ground rules. Uh, otherwise, the recommendations might be a little bit different. Um, and this has to do with if you're elevating things like glutathione, um, most oncologists don't like that because uh, glutathione protects everything, including cancer cells. And so it makes uh, chemotherapy and radiation less effective. So in any case, this is gonna be an area where copper peptide is really going to excel. Actually, what clinical studies have shown is that when you elevate copper peptide, it protects the fibroblasts from the damaging effects of radiation. Um, anyone that was on our LifeWave cruise last year for our 15 year anniversary knows this because they were, if you were using X39 while on the cruise, you noticed you didn't get a sunburn. Uh, and so this is one of the fun applications of copper peptide. But uh, copper peptide is going to accumulate in the skin. It's gonna activate the stem cells in the skin and it's gonna get to work uh, producing collagen for repair of injury. So that would be one of the patches that I would recommend. Um, I'd also recommend, and you could experiment with either glutathione or carnosine. Both glutathione and carnosine are very effective when it comes to repairing damaged skin. So I would recommend that. Um, I would also recommend uh, making sure, especially if someone was a vegetarian, getting adequate amounts of protein in the diet, and you, su you should consider taking a collagen supplement, at least 10 or 20 grams per day, just to make sure that you have the raw materials necessary to uh, repair the damaged skin. I'd also recommend maybe 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C uh, two or three times a day as vitamin C gets involved in repair of damaged tissue. Uh, there's many more things that you can do, but that would be a good place to start. Mm, that's fantastic, great. I think we have uh, just a little time for the, next, the last one here. Um, and basically it's someone who does a lot of body work and Tai Chi and Qigong and feels that, um, you know, they had amazing, you know, results with X39 thinking that, well, gee, you know, uh, maybe this, whatever I'm doing makes it work even better. So I'm just wondering if there's any studies to confirm that it's better, that the technology works better in people doing this kind of uh, working with their energy. I generally think that the answer to that is yes. I've uh, had my own energy practices like Qigong that I've done over the years and I've gone through different phases of being intense with it and not as intense because of my travel schedule. And I've certainly seen this within myself. Um, we did do clinical studies on the energy patches very, very early on. Actually, Beverly Rubick, who is one of the most well-known um, biophysicists in the world, uh, she actually coined uh, the term biofield. Uh, she has performed studies on our patches, and she did a, a study on the energy patches using meridian, electromeridian assessment, and did it in fact uh, find that using uh, the patches would balance out the energy centers uh, throughout the body. So it makes perfect sense that if someone is involved in energy work and they're moving energy through the meridians, through the nervous system, that they are gonna respond more quickly. Now, if we were going to um, explain this in Western terms, this has a lot to do with the um, electrolytes that exist in the collagen fibers that make up the meridian system and of course also in the nerves. And so essentially when energy is flowing freely, there is a normal healthy distribution of electrolytes. There's other phenomena that are occurring as well. But, um, and when there's deficiencies of things like magnesium, potassium, and calcium, we're not gonna get efficient nerve conduction. The energy through the meridians is gonna get blocked. And um, so things like the patches aren't gonna work necessarily as well. Although if they're applied properly, we can clear those blockages. So it makes sense that someone that is an energy practitioner will get better results. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And I think we'll stop right there, Renata. Yeah.